Welcome to Electra Online. If we pick a whole bunch of numbers at random from 0 to 9, the average of that number is, or the average of all the numbers picked, is going to be 4.5. So the idea is that if we pick a smaller subset, a sample of all the possible numbers we can pick from 0 to 9, let's say we pick 18 of them, we have a, a means of at randomly picking 18 numbers, then it might end up with something like this. So here we have an example of what might happen if you pick 18 numbers at random from 0 to 9. So we then added all of them up, it ended up being equal to 80, then we found the average of the, or the mean of the sample of 18 numbers, which was equal to 5. Now the question is, does that violate the concept that we think that the average should be 4.5? We picked 18, it was equal to 5. Hmm. Let's do a hypothesis test. Let's check to see. At a level of significance of 10%, does that meet the mustard, so to speak? Does that seem to indicate that that is okay, that was a good sample that we took? So the null hypothesis is going to tell us that the average should be 4.5, and the alternate hypothesis is that the average is not equal to 4.5. So let's try and see what we get. Here we have drawn the population distribution. The mean of the population should be 4.5 with a standard deviation of 2.87. Notice that at 10% level significance, and we have a two-tailed test because we could be larger or smaller than the average, so we have 5% on the upper side and 5% on the lower side, signifying the, the critical regions on both sides of the population distribution, which leaves us with 90% in the middle for the non-critical region. We can calculate the test statistic, which is different between the sample mean and the population mean, divided by the standard deviation, and multiply it times the square root of the sample size. So let's calculate the test statistic and see what we get. So t is equal to uh, the average that we got was 5 minus 4.5 for the mean of the population, divided by 2.87, and then we're going to multiply that by the square root of the sample size, which is 18. So let's see how big our test statistic is. So the difference is 0.5 divided by 2.87 for the standard deviation, and then multiply times the square root of 18, and we get... Uh, Whoa, I better do that again because that's a terrible number here. 0.5 divided by 2.87 multiplied times the square root of 18, and that's better. We get 0 0.739. 0 0.739. And notice that puts that somewhere about here. Whoop, there's the test statistic. Notice that it's far smaller than the z-score. And therefore, we can say that we're going to fail to reject the um, null hypothesis. So, the fact is that the test statistic ended up being far smaller than the z-score, which means we failed to reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that the average for a randomly picked set of numbers from 0 to 9 should be 4.5, even though our average was 5 when we picked 18 random numbers that was sufficiently close with the sample size of 18 to reject the null hypothesis, so we still claim that you pick any set of numbers at random, you should get an average around 4.5 or not too far away from that. So it looks like we rejected the null, we failed to reject the null hypothesis, we expect that to be a true statement, and that is how it's done. <laughs> yeah, it's a t sometimes it's a tongue twister. Uh, they don't care in statistics. Yep. Yeah, we failed to reject the failure of. <laughs> it's, I know it's a crazy language. Ah. <laughs>